Good morning, everybody. How are you? Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few minutes until it, uh, some people jump on, and I'm also going to check that I am live where I am meant to be. Yay! That's a good start. I am live where I'm meant to be. <laughs> All right. Um, welcome, everybody, to those of you who are watching live um, to Tuesday Morning Business Growth Insights. If you are watching the replay, feel free to pop hashtag replay into the comments. Um, I'm just going to say it straight up. I do apologise for if you're seeing a, a grainy video. At the moment, I'm having an um, interesting time with my internet lately. So, um that's okay. We're all getting it, we're getting it sorted, but it's not going to stop me from delivering a wonderful training for you this morning. Hello, Mindy. How are you this morning? I hope you're doing very well. Um, okay, so uh, as you guys know, um, I'm going live into several different places this morning. So I'm going live on to um, LinkedIn, on to my Facebook profile and also I'm going into my main group in Facebook, Confident Successful Business Owners. Now, if you are watching this and you're not a member of that, feel free to pop on over to Facebook and um, come and join us. It's a wonderful group. Hello, Pranav. Pranav, I hope I spell, I hope I pronounced that right. Lovely to have you joining us. Hello, beautiful Sophia. Lovely to have you joining us. Penny, I can see you're there as well. We've got a bunch of people joining us this morning. How exciting. All right, everybody. So let's get into some training. Come and do these trainings every single Tuesday morning um, in, this, uh, in this group. And they're all about helping you in four main areas in your business. So the areas that I talk about are mindset in business, motivation, which is goal setting, uh, marketing, which is what we're going to look at today because marketing obviously is a big part of business, right? And also momentum, keeping that momentum going once you start to get those sales and things happening in your business. Hello, Jodie, I can see that you're watching as well. All right. So today we're going to talk about having realistic, realistic expectations in business, right? And I... And really, guys, you know, you know that when I come and do these trainings, they're often from things that are happening in my life at the moment. And part of the reason I wanted to talk about this topic is because I've been talking to a lot of people lately, and even myself, right? I've even been talking to myself um, that they, that we have unrealistic expectations in business, right? And and that is that's just how it is. We're having unrealistic expectations. Um, on how you can how we can run our business and how it's going to work out, right? Sometimes we think, oh, it's good, you know, we're going to do these wonderful things. We've got all these wonderful visions and dreams, but it doesn't always work out because the expectations we have are unrealistic, right? Now, honestly, this is not an unusual thing in business. I don't think it's an unusual thing in life either. Okay, uh, as I said, I've had them <laughs> quite often. These unrealistic expectations. Um, this is when when we do, when we're honest with ourselves, this is when we need to draw ourselves back into reality, okay, and really sincerely look at reality and what's happening in our business. So we're going to talk about today reality, right, versus wishing what we could have in business and how I'm going to, I'm going to go through some practical ways that you can go, you can embed this stuff into your business immediately. So some practical ways that you can start to get the sales that you want by thinking realistically and acting realistically as well, right? Okay, so it's also how to embrace the expectations, how to use the expectations that you have to succeed, okay? So as I said, this is very much today, this is a marketing topic. Um, and I'm going to say by, by practicing these methods, you're absolutely going to make more sales. Absolutely 100% going to make more sales. All right, so let's bring it up. There we go. Realistic expectations in business, everybody. And again, if you're watching replay, pop hashtag replay. Um, let me just wait, see if that's coming up. There we go. Okay. So um, the first thing I, I want to, we're talking about being real here today, okay? So the first thing I want to do is get you to get real with yourself. 
ask yourself. And again, you guys know that I, these are processes that I take myself through over and over and over again. So I want you to um, think about when you start your business, you might be just starting your business. When you started your business, what expectations did you have? Okay. Um, when I started my business, in all honesty, my expectations were that I was going to do the course, learn how to um, get out there. You know, I was going to learn everything that I needed to learn in business. I was going to be able to put a website together, um, set up. I, I actually didn't even believe that social media would help me. In all honesty, I did not believe that it would help me. Um, and I thought I was going to set the website up and then people would magically find me. My friends would um, refer me and I would earn millions overnight, right? <laughs> that honestly what I thought would happen. Was that realistic? No, not in any way. But I didn't know that at the time because coming into this new form of business, which, you know, when I'd been in business before, there was no such thing as social media. The internet was really just starting up as a thing. Um, and so I've, you know, I had to come into this new format of business with social media, which was a huge thing that people were starting to utilise for business. Um, I, you know, there was different ways of marketing besides what I had done and learnt in previous business. So the expectations I had were not in any way realistic, okay? And I want you to tell me in the chat, guys, tell me in the chat, you know, if... If, you, if you're if you open enough, can you relate to any of these expectations, right? There's the fact that you thought you'd start a business, set it up, get your ABN, put up a website and everything would be hunky-dory. All your friends would um, refer you and you'd have clients flooding in. That's what I thought, right? Was it realistic? No. Um, and now I want you to think about what are your current expectations in your business? Your current expectations in your business. Okay, so from my point of view, I have been um, restructuring the way I run my Hunt Soul Business Academies, right? So as of next year, there's going to be a different, there's going to be some different, some changes. Okay, now I've had to bring myself back to reality in the last week or so because I had all these, um, let's call them hair-brained ideas, all these brilliant ideas um, of these things that I want to achieve in my business. But I've had to sit back and go, is that realistic? Is what I want to achieve or is what I'm envisioning really realistic? And I've had to admit that no, some of it isn't. That means I'm going to have to make some changes, right? So this is what I mean. So I want you to ask these questions. What were your expectations when you started business? And what are they now? I think that's the most important question. What are your expectations now? Are you still believing that your website is all you need? Are you still believing that you don't need social media to build, to build and grow business? Are you still believing that, you know, um, I don't know, your friends are going to automatically go out and support you and refer you to everybody, even if they might not understand what you're doing? All right, so think about that. Okay, so let's talk about slow burns. We're looking at sales here. So we're talking about slow burns versus versus quick wins, okay? Now, most of the time, guys, business is a slow burn. Like it or not, okay, I know that there are a lot of people out there who we see as um, overnight successes, but... There is, the reality is there's no such thing as an overnight success, okay? You've heard me say this and you've heard other people say it a lot, is that it takes a lot of um, unsuccessful nights before all of a sudden there is one successful night and we and people look like an overnight success, but you don't see what happens before that one night, okay? So if you need quick cash in your business, okay, now... I would suggest focusing on the small sales, right, rather than the bigger sales. And the reason for this is because, you know, if you've got a couple of products, um, you know, where they may be under $50 or under $100, it's going to be much easier to make those sales 
for that smaller amount of money than trying to very quickly sell, sell your high-end products, okay? Because people are a lot more likely to part with a small amount of cash quickly than they are a large amount of cash, right? So if you look at this, this evolution of the buyer's journey, which I'll get to a little bit more in a minute, the buyer's journey, guys, has changed. It's absolutely changed over the years. So I'm going to say it again. If you want quick cash in your business, and there are times when we all need quick cash in our business, right? Focus on the smaller sales rather than the bigger sales because that, that is what is going to take a lot more work. We're going to talk to that a little bit um, in a minute. Now, if you want larger sales, okay, this is where you need more touch points in your business. So if you're selling that higher ticket item, then you are absolutely going to need to work harder for these people to part with a larger amount of money. So it's, is it going to take longer? Yes. Think about yourself and you're considering parting with a large amount of money, right? You don't just go, yeah, I will spend that, do you? Right? I bought a car last week. I had to really think about whether I wanted to part with that amount of money. <laughs> it wasn't a, yeah, I'm just going to pay it, right? Now, again, refer to this graphic below, okay? As I said, times have changed with the sales aspect, whether we like it or not. So having a look at this, the buyer's journey used to be, okay, you create the awareness, they do a little bit of exploring solutions, that was the marketing side. So the marketing was not nearly as intensive as it needs to be now sales was they're starting to um the sales was they they start they're exploring a little bit more they're comparing vendors and then they purchase okay now if you look at the bottom one this is the buyer's journey now so you have we have to create a lot of awareness for people to understand and know who we are okay no like and trust we're going to talk about a little bit um they're going to be exploring the solutions so not only are they kind of, you know, exploring your solutions, they're exploring many others. Social media, guys, has made, and the internet itself, but in particular social media, has made it so easy for people to go and do research. What that means, though, is that there's a lot of noise out there in social media, and we need to learn to be seen through that noise in our business, okay? So we need to stand out above everybody else now again so they're exploring the solutions and they're comparing you with other people so again you need to stand out right people want to see you you want them to go oh my god she or he is the one that i want to work with and then make the purchases okay so there's going to be a lot more touch points that we need to make okay buyers these days are a lot more savvy than they used to be Okay, because there's more, like I said, there's research available to them before they make their final decisions. So the marketing aspect of your business needs to have a much bigger focus, like it or not, on it than the sales process. Yes, the sales process is important, but the thing should be once you, by the time you get someone into the sales process, into a sales call, it should be much easier for them to make a decision to work with you or buy from you. Is this making sense to everybody? I hope it is. <laughs> all right, again, if it is or if it isn't, put it in the chat. Tell me, I love to feel like I'm in the room with all of you. Okay, so let's have a look at some reality, guys. Let's have a look at the stats. Um, I love statistics because they tell the truth. And these are the most, these, are, uh, these stats were from, I think, uh, July this year, all right? Um, so, it used to be said, and it still is said a lot, that it takes an average of eight touch points to gain someone's trust. Now, when I say touch points, I mean people seeing you, um, you know, seeing a post of yours on social media, seeing an email, um, getting a message from you, you know, um, reading a quote, whatever it is. So, you replying to one of their uh, one of their comments. Okay? These are all touch points. These are all visibility points of uh, you putting yourself in front of their eyes. Okay, so a touch point done. You know, it, it, 
we make it seem a lot more difficult than it needs to be. But a touch point is really you connecting with them in some way. Now, an average of eight touch points. Here's the kicker. Realistically, and this is what I mean when I'm saying having realistic expectations of business, realistically, it may take up to 50 touch points before someone is ready to work with you. Okay. Now, this is why it's so important, guys, to be consistent in your marketing daily. Daily, right? And because what you want to do is, is keep your business, keep you and your business front of mind in that person who's looking for someone just like you. Okay. Now I understand that this 50 touch points, you might be going, holy crap, are you joking me? That's a lot of touch points, Ali. Yes, it is. But again, remember the touch points don't have to be as complicated as you think they are. They might be following you on Instagram as well as they are on Facebook and on LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, they might see um, you doing an interview. Whatever it is, that's a touch point. So it's not that hard for you to, to give your clients potentially 50 touch points in, say, a month, right? And keep in mind, if they're going to be buying your high ticket item, they're going to be researching you. They're going to be studying you before they choose to even go into a sales call and consider spending that money with you. Okay? Is this making sense? Hope so. Okay. Now, 60%, guys, 60% of clients say no four times before they actually say yes. This sucks, right? It sucks. Let's call spade spade. It sucks, but it's true. So this is where you may have heard this before. The fortune guide is in the follow-up. If you go into a sales call and someone says no, or if uh, you've you know sent someone to your website and they go, I'm not ready to buy yet, don't take no for an answer straight away. Just go, that's okay. When can I, you know, can I can I check in with you in a few days' time? Okay. The fortune is in the follow-up and it's not just, it's, it's how you follow up as well. It's not just, you know, come on, buy my stuff, this is good shit, I want you to buy it, right? That's where they're probably going to say no for good. You want it to make them feel that, you, uh, that you're serving them, right? You're giving them something that they want and also that they need. Okay, so keep in mind that 60% of clients are going to say no four times, but they, eventually they're going to come back and say yes. So the fortune, guys, is in the follow-up. Another stat is that 50 to 30% of leads, they actually become paying clients. And you might be going, oh, God damn it, that's a small percentage. Yes, it seems that way. This is why something that I say to my heart soul business academy clients is it, we have we need to celebrate the no's, right? Every no, and this is something my coach used to say to me, and I loved it when she said this, and I really took this on board. Celebrate the no's. One step, one um, every no gets you one step closer to a yes, right? And in all honesty, last week for me, I had, um, you know, I had quite a few sales calls and there were quite a few no's before I finally got a yes, right? And, you know, this is where, and we're not going to talk about mindset today because we're talking about marketing, but this is where the mindset does come into it because when you get a no, you've got to learn how to deal with it, all right? But every no gets you one step closer to US. So, so when you look at this, you know, 15 to 30% of leads actually become paying clients. That's actually, um, you know, so roughly 20%, let's go in the middle of that, 20% of people are going to become your clients. That's not a bad percentage. That's not a bad percentage at all. But again, the reason I'm telling you this is so you can keep have those realistic expectations. Okay. So I mentioned before the no like and trust factor, the KLT factor, right? I'm going to talk about that. Um, first of all, what we need to do to get people to know, like, and trust you, now there's the, there's the no factor, great. They know you, they've seen you, great. Remember these touch points. The more touch points you have with them, the more they will move through this system, right? So first of all, we need to know who you're talking to. 
you've probably heard this a million times, but I cannot say this enough. Be very, very clear on who your target market is, right? If you're not clear, then you need to go back and work it out exactly who your target market is. If you can't say who your target market is in a couple of sentences and not just say my target market is everyone, <laughs> because I get that a lot too, you have to be very clear on who your target market and your niche is another way to put it, who you're talking to. Okay, it may even be time, maybe in your business for a bit of a change up. I'm having a bit of a change up in your business right now, as I said. Right, so know who you're talking to. Okay, now when you get the when they get to know you, they start to know you, right? Then you want to get them to like you. So this is how you're going to take daily purposeful action. All right, now daily action. Is it repetitive? Yes, but it's daily action because basically there's no point in playing a guessing game. And this is something that I did in business. I see a lot of people still doing it in business. They're playing a guessing game, right? And it, so this is why what you're doing, you need to have purpose behind it. Okay, repetitive part of it means having a strategy and giving that strategy a good red hot go. Okay, so this is also what I see a lot of people doing, and I've been guilty of it myself, of course, is trying something for a week, getting frustrated because it doesn't work or nothing's happening or not getting any clients or no money's coming in and then changing tactic altogether. So repetitive means trying something for a significant amount of time, having a structure that you're following for a significant amount of time, okay? If you don't do that, if you if you are trying something for a short amount of time and then you're giving that up and then you're trying something else for a short amount of time and you're giving that up and you're trying something else, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get confused. Your potential clients are going to get confused and they won't buy. So you're that they they might know you, they might like you, but then you're not getting them to trust you enough that you're um, what's the word? that you're settled enough in your business to be able to purchase from you if that makes sense okay now let's talk about networking guys networking is this is the big um like this is another like factor right um now networking and genuine connection genuine connection is the key i am just going to put this out there guys cold messaging does not work it doesn't work, right? Asking for the sale or asking for someone to book in for a sales call with you before you have even taken the time to connect with them, learn who they are, learn about them, they don't know you yet. They don't like you yet and they certainly don't trust you enough yet to want to work with you. Now, looking at business networking as well, when you go to a business networking meeting or any networking meeting, right, for that matter, a lot of people, and I had an experience years ago um, where a lady was just literally, I was in a networking meeting and literally this lady was just going around the room, say, hi, my name's, my name's um, um, Falula, right? here's my business card, this is what I do. Not bothering to talk to everyone, just going to the next person, hi, my name's Falula, here's my business card, this is what I do right? That was it. And she wasn't stopping to talk to find out about anybody else. And I can guarantee you that those business cards, most of the ones that she gave out ended up on the floor or in the bin, unfortunately, for her. Because she didn't know any better than to stop, talk to someone, um, have a conversation with them, learn to get to know them rather than you know here's my business card i want i want you to give me money that's what that feels like okay so have continual networking and networking can be done online it can be done offline okay so continual networking creates genuine connection and let's go uh expect the slow burn right like i said if we go back to that little um graphic that i showed you business is a slow burn no like and trust you've got 50 touch points guys up to 50 touch points it's not always 50 right 
Average is eight, which is great, but it might take up to 50. It depends on that person's personality too, because all personality is different, which is something I'm learning at the moment, which is fascinating. <laughs> so if you are realistic with yourself and you expect the slow burn in sales to come, then when you have those no's, you know, right, that's okay. I'm celebrating that no because I want to get closer to a yes. That's okay. I know that that, that that yes is coming. I know that those sales are coming. I know that I'm doing so. I'm doing enough in my business, continuing daily, purposeful, repetitive action that that is going to help people to get to the stage where they trust me. And what I want to say here too is that, you know, you're probably looking at all these going, holy crap, this looks like so much work, guys. As I said, it's not as much work as you might think. It's not as exhausting as you think. And the reason is because, right, we have a proven structure to follow rather than playing a guessing game or, you know, another way to say is throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. When you have a proven structure to follow, and you follow it and you take that daily purposeful repetitive action rather than guessing what you're doing this is when you're going to have that success this is where sales are going to come okay so be realistic and this was another thing that I, another unrealistic expectation i had in business when i came into it was that i knew everything i needed to know now as i said i Everything changed, right? I hadn't run my own business for about uh, 10 years when I came back into the business world. And holy crap, things had changed. But I still had belief that, you know what, I know it all. I can figure it all out myself. And, yeah, I could have, but it was going to take me a hell of a lot more time than it was learning someone else's structure who'd been there before me, right? And I, I got sick of playing the guessing game. So I know there's many of you out there who are still playing the guessing game. I know there are because I talk to you all the time, right? Um, and, and even though you might not know that you're playing the guessing game, I know that you are, right? And this is what I want you to get realistic with yourself today. So are you in need of a proven structure, right? If you are and you would like to connect with me further to work with me either one-on-one -on -one or work in my Heart and Soul Business Academy, which is group coaching, learn my proven structure, which has helped me get to where I am now, which has helped multiple clients get to where they are and having incredible success. Pop the word action in the comments. We'll be in touch with you. Um, we'll make time for you and I to have a chat, right? We're just connecting, we're just talking. Um, and to see how I can help you in your business. All right, so pop the word action in the chat if you are ready to learn a proven structure that works, guys. It absolutely works, okay? All right, so thank you, guys. I really sincerely hope that that has helped you today in having realistic expectations in business as well as some actionable things that you can actually go away and do in your business. Right? It's not just about me telling you um, what you need to do. It's actually now you going out and doing it. That's a big thing. Okay, And then I, that's something I say to my clients all the time. We have action tasks every week. Those who take the action are those who succeed. So once again, if you're ready and you want, to, if you want me to help you move forward, pop the word action in the comments. And we will be in touch with you. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Um, of talking to you in those business booster calls and also I will see you again next Tuesday morning for another Business Growth Insights, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Bye.